We're holding, as I, men- as I mentioned, chapter 77, Halacha 17, in the Kitzur Shulchan Aruch. Halacha, Halacha Yitzayin is going to discuss the laws of, uh, of Lacha Mishnah. Does anyone know the reason why we do, we cut, we, by ever, by, on Shabbos we have two challahs and we don't just make, we don't just uh, have one challah. Oh, to remind us that we got a double portion of mana on Shabbos. Right, very good. So that's the, that is the reason why we have two challahs on Shabbos. Another yeah, idea. Like the, the Beit HaMikdash. Yeah, that's what I mean. What, what was that? I didn't hear that. I what said am- it's like as it was in the Beit HaMikdash. Right, the showbreads, right? Yes. Another idea is that it says in the Medrash that everything on Shabbos is double. There's a double. So we do. So we have two. Chal- another reason why we have two chalas. Now we're going to learn the, the laws of the two chalas. There's the obligation to, by every Shabbos meal, to have two complete chalas. What does it mean a complete chala? That it's it's a it's a, it's a it's a complete it's a complete chala that there's no it's not a, it's not cut in half. And if it's there, if it has a small little if if it has a small little crack in it, but there's no actual chala missing, so there's just a cut with the knife. But it's still in one. But it's still no challah is missing. So if you're still able to pick up the challah and the challah doesn't uh, get, doesn't oh, fall, sorry. get a, get disconnected, that they'll come into two pieces, then it's still considered one piece of challah, one whole challah. If you hold both challahs in your hand. While you say the bracha, Hamaitzi, which is recited before eating bread, and then you should cut one of the two chalas. The custom is to make a mark on the chala in the area of the chala where you want to cut the chala. What's the reason for this custom? The reason for this custom is because during the week it's necessary to cut a little bit around the bread before you say the bracha hamaitzi. And it explains the reason for this in uh, chapter 41, Halakha 3, with Shabbos, the Esher, and on Shabbos, you're not able to cut the edge of the, the, the edge of the chala. You're not going to cut around the chala. Because it's necessary that the chala should be complete while you say the bracha of the chala. And therefore, you should at least make a mark at the place where you're going to cut in order that you should know where to cut. And it won't, it won't be necessary to take time to figure out where you should cut the chala. Now, yeah. now uh, if a person, so this idea is that we're saying you should make a mark on the challah, yeah. then say the bracha. 
No, then but, you say, no, but the phone is doing that. Then you should say the bracha hamaitzi after you make a mark, and afterwards you should cut the chala with the least interrupt interruption of time possible from when you say the bracha to the cutting of the chala, in order that you should eat the chala as soon as possible after your bracha hamaitzi on the chala. So to point, just to mention, if a person makes a mark on the chala and they can't, and they don't see where, and after the, after they say the bracha maitzi, they don't find right away where they made the mark, it's better just to cut anywhere in the chala. It doesn't have to be exactly where you made, it doesn't have to be where you made the mark. As long, it's better to not make a, to take time to take extra time to cut the challah, rather to cut the challah as soon as possible, even if it's not going to be on the mark that you made before you say the, the blessing on the challah. You have two challahs. What you should do is that the challah that you want to cut, it should be closer to you. In order that you're not going to pass over a mitzvah, since both of these chalas are used for the mitzvah of, and they're they're possible to use for the mitzvah of eating chala on Shabbos, it's better that you should use the chala that's closer to you. So if you so you should before making the bracha on the chala decide which chala you want to use, and and that chala that you want to use should be closer to you. It's what's considered closer to you. So the one on top, if one's on, there's there could be a chala one on top of the other. The one on top is closer. It's 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 closer for you to cut the chala. Now, it's brought down that Friday night you should you should cut the chala that is on the bot that is that is on the bottom while you are saying the bracha on the chala. So now how do you, how do you take care of this idea that you should, use, that you should cut the chala that is closer to you? Uh, if on Friday, so other times, let's say Shabbos day or during a festival, you'll cut the chala that's on the top. But on Friday night, you're cutting the chala that is on, that is on the bottom when you're saying the bracha. So how are you, how do we, how does, how do we, how does this fit with the idea that you should, you should cut the chal that is closer to you? So the way what you should do is, is that the, on Friday night, you should put the chal that's on the, that's on the bottom close, even though it's on the bottom, you should, it should be closer to, to you, closer to your, closer to your body, close than the top chal. So it should be sticking out closer to the person reciting the blessing on the chala than the top chala. And even if you're going to eat many meals during Shabbos, it's necessary that by every meal you should have two chalas. And likewise, when you make Kedish Shabbos day, but you're only going to eat Chala later, and and after Kedish, you're just you're not eating Chala, but you're just going to eat some food that is Mizanus. You should have two. You should take two items of that of what you're eating, and you should make and you should say the bracha mizanis on two things that you are eating. Does is is everyone familiar with the with um, the idea that there's certain foods that you say the bracha mizanis on it? Does anyone not know what that means? 
Okay, I guess that. If anyone wants to. Sorry, I don't know what that means. Okay, so before eating, there's we have a there's an obligation to say a bless. If you want to eat, there's an obligation to say a blessing before you eat any food. Now, regard any time during any any time during the week or any whenever you eat, right? Now, different foods and drinks have different blessings. So, bread and challah have the blessing hamaitzi, that um, you say baruch atat, then say Hashem's name, and say the beginning of a blessing, alukino melech olam, and then you say hamaitzi lacha min aretz. Then for other foods that come from the five that they're from the five grains of wheat, barley, oat, rye, and spell, but they're not, it's not a bread or a, or, or a challah, then you have to say a different blessing, and that's the blessing that's called mizonos. Rabbi, can I ask a question? Yeah. What do you do for rolls? I'm just going to say this in, so rolls are also on my see. I'm just saying that a general, yeah, rolls are also on my see, but I'm just going to say oh, yeah. general. There's a lot more that could be discussed in this topic, but I'm just giving a general How picture. Do you do rolls as far as what you just said about cutting a uh, uh, strip of, of rolls or taking a, uh, a knife and whatever it is? So if you're able to make a mark on the roll and cut it, then that would be a preferable thing to do. If it's if it's diff if you feel on if you feel that, that it's not that you're not able to do so, then you could just uh, break with your hand a piece of khala after you say the blessing Hamaitzi. Thank you. Um, then there's a then there's another, so there's six blessings, that six different types of blessings that you could say before foods and drinks. Mm -hmm. Mentioned there's the blessing Hamaitzi, there's the blessing Mizonos, then there's a blessing Hagafen that you say on wine or grape juice. Then there's blessings for fruit, which is Bore Priha Eitz. Then there's blessings for Vegetables, which is bore priya dama, and then anything else that isn't included in any of, in, in in any of those categories, for instance, milk, cheese, eggs, meat, water, all drinks, and a lot of other things. They would have a, the blessing would be shahakol niya bitvari. So this last halacha in. Halacha 17, that if you make Kiddush on wine and you're not eating challah, but you're eating other foods to be, that are Mizainus, you should have two of them. According to the Alter Rebbe, it is unnecessary. You don't have to have, you don't have to have two of them. You don't have to hold two in your hand when you're saying a blessing, when you're going to say a blessing, Mizainus, after making Kiddush. So if one wants to have their Shabbos meal later on in the day and they're just going to make Kiddush and eat Mizanus, you would just need to, you would you'd make Kiddush and then find some food, you would have some food that's Mizanus and you wouldn't have to hold two things that are Mizanus in your hands when you say the bracha Mizanus. Halacha 18. Now we're going to discuss, is it necessary for everyone to make their own Lacha Mishnah, to have their own two Chalas when on Shabbos? Or could there just be one person on the table that will say the blessing over two Chalas? Im in l'chol ha-mesuvah m'shochan Lacha Mishnah, el echad, if there isn't two chalas in front of each person that is sitting by the table, rather there's only two chalas in front of one person, he should do 
the procedure of cutting the challah and making a blessing over two challahs. And you should have all, everyone in mind for fulfilling the mitzvah of having two challahs over Shabbos. By a meal on Shabbos. And also, like I mentioned, you, should, you have to say a blessing before eating. So also, saying a ble- the blessing ham- before eating challah, they prefer, fulfill their obligation of what? That the one that is breaking the br- the cutting the bread is saying the blessing hamaitzi. So in other words, the one that breaks, the, that cuts the challah says a blessing hamaitzi, and no one else has to say the brach hamaitzi. And before he says the blessing, Hamaitzi, you should say, which the idea of saying that is to be is to get everyone's attention. The, these words means with permission of my teacher and my with, with permission with permission of my my master and my teacher. It's a, it's an honorable way of saying, I'm doing this with permission of everyone around me. So after the one that it cuts the challah, cuts for himself a piece of challah, he should take a bite from the challah he cut, and then cut challah for everyone else that is um, going to have challah from his to from his challah that he's cutting. Now, Rabbi. A, now one more thing before I'll take a question. Um, the idea that we, that we read that one person could say the blessing I might say, no one, and then everyone else around the that is having challah from his challah that he's cutting doesn't need to say the blessing Hamaitzi. That's not the practice custom nowadays. Practice custom is, is that everyone should say their own blessing Hamaitzi when they receive a piece of challah. Yeah, go go ahead. Um, yes, uh, I was staying in the home of a, of a Robertson for some time uh, in New York and how she did it was to put two bilkalach, that is two rolls on everybody's plate, two small rolls like that other gentleman was mentioning so that everybody would be able to accomplish the mitzvah. But I've also been in the home of Rebbeim who uh, <clears throat> would you know, have the two in front of them, make the uh, pre a uh, 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 attention getting comment and then break the bread for everybody and distribute it. Yeah, and both I mean, are. I think it's able, it, simpler it's, with it, a lot of people to just have the two rolls for each both, one. Both um both options are are fine. If a person prefers to have two small rolls by each person's um. By each by each uh, person's place, that's fine, and they could each person can make their own lacha mishnah, cut their own, or you could just have one person that that will that will cut that will do the that will say the bracha of a meitzi over, or you could just have one person will have a chala, will be two chalas in front of one person, and that one person will cut chala for everyone. And, and you'll do the obligation of having two eating a meal with two chalas. Everyone by the table will fulfill the, the, the obligation of having a meal. You should have two chalas by your meal. Thank you. Halacha 19. Rabbi, Rabbi, I have a question, Rabbi. In case I decide not to go to my son and I don't have two chalas, could I do the bracha with two slices of bread? It would, that would be, it's not, 
I don't think so. I think you should you should you should make an effort to have two two uh, roles. Yes. Chalas or rolls. Okay, thank. Seem like now we're going to learn. Rabbi Yassi, just yeah. a quick. I have a quick question. The most common thing that I've seen is when the person is using the two chalas and he's having in mind the guests. The people that get the the piece of challah then say hamotzi, and I always wondered. Is it okay for me to say in an undertone hamotzi while the while the host is holding the two slimas, the two complete chalas? Is that okay, or not okay? Good question. Um, is it? I what I've seen people do, and I I think this is this I'm um, I'm uh, almost positive is okay. I'm not positive, but I'm almost positive. Um, is that w the person that is cutting the challah, he says the bracha hamaitzi. If you hold your hand together with him on the challah and say the bracha with him, that is fine to say to say the bracha hamaitzi then and not wait for when you, your challah is cut and, and in your hand. If you're not holding the challah with him, I'm not sure because regularly we say you have to have something in your hand when you're saying the bracha for food. I'm not sure. I don't know the answer, but it could be that it, I'll, I'll try to look into it. Let's go to Halakha 19. We mentioned it, we learned in the first chapter of the law of uh, what the first chapter of of the laws of Shabbos in the Kitzel Shulchan Aruch, chapter 72, halacha 11, that there's a obligation for every man to read twice the weekly Torah portion and read once the translation in, in, uh, in Aramaic. And it's preferable to do, to do that reading before Shabbos on Friday. Now we're going to learn what if one didn't, what if a man didn't read do read the Torah portion on Friday? When is when when are the other deadlines of uh, that you should try to read the Torah portion before? Imlay Kara Haparsha Be'erev Shabbos. If you didn't read the Torah portion on Friday, Lo Yechol B'Shabbos B'Shabbos Ad Shikra Eno Ad Shikra you should not it's you should not eat the the Shabbos meal the Shabbos day meal until you read the Torah portion that will be the it's you should try it's better to not eat the Shabbos meal until you read the Torah portion and if you didn't read the Torah portion before your Shabbos day meal another time that you should try to make sure to do it before is before davening mincha on Shabbos. And if you didn't do it by then, you still have until Tuesday night to read that week's, to read the Torah portion. The, the Alter Rebbe adds that you have even until Simcha's Torah to read the Torah portion. So if you miss the Parsha, let's say Parsha Sisra, you forgot to read that week's Torah portion. I'm busy. Then you still could read. You Sammy, could still, and you forgot to read that week's Torah I portion. Electrical so when are you able to read to read that? Do the obligation of reading that week's Torah portion. You have until the next Simcha's Torah. So that would be. What a that's in around uh, what is it around eight months from now or something like that? Yeah. Halacha Halacha Chaf. Now we're gonna learn what is you're not allowed to fast on Shabbos. What is considered fasting? Also, Lysanish Peshavis, Lashem, Timus, Afilus, Mankatsu. 
it's forbidden to fast on Shabbos. If it's if you're fasting for the sake of fasting, even if you're only fasting for a short amount of time, if you say for the next hour I'm going to fast, it's not a long time necessarily, or even even less than an hour. Um, for the next half hour, so it says I'm going to fast. You're not allowed to do that on Shabbos to say I'm going to fast for a certain amount of time. And even if you're fasting, not for the sake of fasting, but it just happens to be that you're not eating. That is also forbidden if it's if you're going to do that for a half a day, till midday. So when you wake up Shabbos, so on Shabbos morning, you have to make sure to eat before midday. And midday means what? The midday from the time that the sun rises until the, the sun sets. It does, it's not always 12 o'clock. Rather, it dep depends on the middle time between sunrise to sunset. So either you can make sure to eat, have your have Kiddush and your Shabbos meal before midday, or you could make sure to eat or drink before davening. It is forbidden to be distressed on a certain discomfort, God forbid, on Shabbos. You don't want to be distressed on Shabbos. Rather, what should you do if something is, if something Something that that uh, that's bothersome happens on Shabbos. You should ask mercy from the Master of Mercy. You should ask Hashem to be merciful, and then it should be there should be only good and and re, and revealed good. Halacha chafbeis. Now we're going to learn there's a mitzvah, there's, obliga there's obligation, sorry, there's an obligation to have, to say a hundred blessings every day. During the week, it's much easier to fulfill this, this obligation, since there's many more blessings in the davening. Davening during the week is 19 blessings, and we have three, da three prayers every day. And on Shabbos, there's four prayers, but there are only seven blessings in each prayer. So there's many less um, brachas one is saying in davening on Shabbos. So there has to be another way to try to find, to try to make, to try to attain saying a hundred brachas on Shabbos. So that's what's going to be addressed in this halacha. Mitzvah lahar mispepeiros. It's a mitzvah to add in eating more fruit and delicacies and to smell nice fragrance in order to say more blessings to complete saying a hundred blessings on the day of Shabbos. And it's also a mitzvah to have pleasure with anything that will give a per to that person pleasure. You, why is that a mitzvah? Because it says in Yeshai in Yeshayo, that we call Shabbos is a day for pleasure. So you're doing a mitzvah by doing anything that will give you pleasure. By doing anything that, that will give you pleasure on Shabbos, you are doing a mitzvah. Halacha Chaf Gimel. Now we're going to discuss that you're not allowed to say on Shabbos, I'm doing something in order 
I'm doing something now on Shabbos for, for after Shabbos. However, you're allowed to do something on Shabbos for after Shabbos in certain cases if you're not saying that I'm doing it for after Shabbos. That's what we'll discuss. Achar, so the Shabbos Achar is after one's Shabbos day meal, if one wants to take a nap, they can take a nap. But one should not take a nap. Sorry, one should not say I'm taking a nap because I need to do work after Shabbos or I need to go on a trip after Shabbos. I need to travel after Shabbos. So you could take a nap and have in mind that I'm napping so I can, so I should be rested in order to travel after Shabbos or to do a certain forbidden labor after Shabbos. That's permissible as long as you don't say I'm I'm napping for this for that sake. So this is true not only about napping but uh, other things as well. Let's say a person was learning, and they're learning in order to. They're learning in order to have a test. Or they're learning because they want to prepare a speech that they're going to say during the week or after Shabbos. They're allowed to do that learning as long as they don't say, I am learning for a test that, and which is implying a, for something that's after Shabbos or for the speech that I'm going to give, which is going to be after Shabbos. Another example that you should... That you, that you should be careful with is you shouldn't say I'm, I'm eating in order that I shouldn't be hungry after Shabbos or I'm stopping to eat in order that I should be able to eat something else after Shabbos. But you could say I will, um, let's say one wanted to make sure that they could eat something that was dairy after Shabbos. They could say, um, I'm going to stop. Um, right now, I'm going to stop, stop eating me, uh, meat. And that, that, that's not saying that I'm doing this for something after Shabbos, but it's just saying that I'm stopping to eat meat, which will allow me to eat dairy after Shabbos. I might even remind others that if they stop eating meat, they'll be allowed to eat dairy after Shabbos. I'm sorry, Rabbi Yossi, did you say that that's allowed or not allowed? That is allowed as long as you don't say I'm doing it specifically for the dairy. You could say I'm stopping to eat meat as long as you don't because you, as long as you don't mention an order that I should be able to eat dairy after Shabbos. Or you could say something else that could, that could, that, that is not, you could just say, oh, we're, you could say, right now it's uh, three o'clock. If anyone's wondering what time they want to finish eating meat. But they, but they can't say, I, I'm, I'm, um, right now it's uh, three o'clock and we want to eat dairy at, at 9.15. So therefore, so if you want to be, if you want to not be flashic, you want, you want to be able to eat dairy, you should stop eating, you should stop eating meat. Now we're going to talk yeah. about that after. What Rabbi, eat. Yeah. I just want to mention it's tradition in our family um, all across the globe at this point because they're all living all over um, that the, the uh, Shalashudas is always parved. And because it's, it goes without saying that they don't want to be fleshic anymore. And, and there's no need to say. Oh, I'm not eating meat after Shabbos. It's just the tradition 
that you're eating power. You eat hummus, you eat, you know, uh, with, you know, whatever, with the two pieces of bread, they have to have the bread for shalashudas and it has to be eaten by a certain time, and which you haven't mentioned, but I'm just saying that this has been the way that our family does it, you know, so that there right, is- that's a good, that's a good, very good, uh, good idea that it takes away any, any, um, for those that want to make sure to have, be able to eat dairy after Shabbos, don't have any any worries. They just yeah, just they only have, food. have a power of the shalashudas, you know, right? Herring or um, hummus. I they they get all that stuff from the them. I forgot the name of it. It's like a, a it's a spread that they put on the bread, mm. you know. Okay, let's you know. let's go let's go and see the next the next halacha. The last, the final halacha in Simon Ayin Zayin, chapter 77. After your Shabbos, after a person's uh, Shabbos meal, if one wants to nap, they could go for a nap. And then after their nap, or if they don't go for a nap, then after their Shabbos meal. It's a, to- it's a good time to sit to study Torah, to learn Torah. Shabbos is a day that we don't have to do, we don't, that we don't work. So we have free time. So part of the, of course we know Shabbos, we have free time and we could, we could, we, we rest, we, we sit, we have, we have a nice Shabbos meal. It's a day of pleasure, but also Shabbos was given that we should have the time to sit and learn and connect to which learning is a way that we connect to Hashem. So now we're going to learn about that idea. After your Shabbos meal or after your Shabbos nap, you should set time to study Torah, to learn Torah. The Parsha Shabbos number, when the section of the Torah, of the Torah that speaks about Shabbos, it says, the Mesha the Mesha gathered. This is not the regular wording of a Torah section when it starts telling us the laws of the of the when it comes to tell us some the when it comes to tell us laws, it doesn't start saying that Moshe gathered, although always Mo, Mo, Moshe was saying the laws in front of the Jewish people, so he gathered them. But the Torah doesn't tell us that part that Moshe gathered them. Only in this in this uh, Torah section, in this Torah portion does it say, this. only in this section of the Torah does it say that Moshe gathered. So what's the reason that the Torah had to say that Moshe gathered? So the reason is as follows. Our rabbi is explained as follows. Why does it say in this Torah section, and Moshe gathered, and doesn't say so in all the other sections of the Torah. Hashem is said to Moshe, Go down and make for me large assemblies on the day of Shabbos. Why should Hashem make large assemblies on the day of Shabbos? The reason is in order that the future generations will learn to gather assemblies, to make assemblies every Shabbos and to study Torah in groups. Ayin Amru, it's also said in Talmud Yerushalmi, Le'nitnu Shabbosis v'yom in Tevim li'yisrael el alasik v'hem b'teira. That Shabbos and holidays were not given to the Jewish nation. The, sorry, that Shabbos and the holidays were only given to the Jewish nation to be involved in learning Torah. The 
as many men, they are busy throughout the, throughout the week with their work and they don't have time to learn to learn to, to learn Torah, to learn that much Torah. They have very little time during the week to learn Torah. Thank God people over here have time. We, we, we join to, to learn Torah during the week. But there are many people that they don't have so much time to learn Torah during the week. And on Shabbos and on the holidays that they are free from their work, they're able to spend time to learn Torah. Therefore, the people that work throughout the week and they don't have so much time to learn Torah during the week, they have more of an obligation to learn Torah on Shabbos, on the Holy Shabbos. Each person, according to their level, how much they could learn Torah on Shabbos. That's the end of chapter seventy-seven. I want to, I want to go through, make a summary of some practical practical halachas, practical laws that we discussed in chapter 77. Just uh, our, a summary, so it'll be the, easier to remember when we when we go over it a second time. It's not, it's not everything, but it's going to be a good portion of the practical laws. So if you want to write it down, you could get, take your pen and paper, and I'm going to go through different laws. So firstly, there's the mitzvah. Rabbi Yossi. Yeah. Rabbi Yossi, I'm missing for some reason Alacha 18 and Alacha 20. We did it today. Um, Can you say, tell me what Alacha 18 was? So I'll, tell you, I'll tell you in short. Alacha 18 said that you, if not everyone is, make, if, there's, if there's only lacha mishal, there's only two chalas in front of one person, and everyone else that is sitting by the Shabbos table doesn't have oh. two chalas in front of them, then the one that has two chalas in front of them should make a bracha on the two chalas and have, and he'll, ha and he'll fulfill, and everyone else will fulfill the mitzvah with his cutting of the, with his uh, bracha on the two chalas and while he cuts the two challahs. And he'll cut one of the challahs and give it to everyone. And he should taste, he should take a bite from a piece of challah that he cuts for himself first and only afterwards give pieces, slices of challah to everyone else that is sitting by the table. That was halacha 18. Halacha 20 was that you're not allowed to okay. fast on Shabbos. And Oh, okay. Thank you. Okay. So now a summary for the practical laws that we discussed in halacha in this chapter of the Kitzel Shochanar. So there's a mitzvah to the, there's a mitzvah to make kiddush on Shabbos. According to the Torah, that mitzvah is through saying a bracha in, in davening Shmon Asre. The rabbis instituted that you should make Kiddush over a cup of wine. If a person davens the Friday night davening early and they also make Kiddush before night, they should remember, a man should remember to say the three Parsha, the three sections of the three paragraphs of Shema after the meal before they go to sleep. One is not allowed to eat or drink before Kiddush. Um, 
there's one should it's preferable to have wine that you enjoy. So if different what's the bet what's what's a good thing to make kiddish to use for kiddish? A wine that you enjoy. And it's not that it's a wine, it just depends on what you enjoy, the better and not what other people consider a good wine. Um, the Chabad custom is to stand during the brach of Kiddush. Um, before saying the paragraph, Yema Shishri Vaychula Shemayim, everyone at the table should look at the Shabbos candles. And before saying the bracha, that's sanctifying the day of Shabbos, which ends off Baruch Atah Hashem Mikadosh Shabbos. Everyone by the Shabbos table should look at the cup of wine. What should one? What should what should uh, what should be used for Kiddush? So the best thing to use is wine, if for health reasons or you aren't comfortable with you, with making Kiddush on wine. Then you should make kiddush on grape juice, and if you can't do on that or you don't have it, then you should make kiddush on bread. Um, women are obligated to in the midst of kiddush. When a person hears kiddush, they should focus on hearing the words of the kiddush. And they should answer and answer Amen after the bracha. Once You're breaking you, up. We couldn't hear you. When one is listening to Kiddush, they should listen closely to the one that is reciting Kiddush and answer Amen after he finishes the blessing of Kiddush. All right. Wine, wine for Kiddush, you should, use, you should not use wine that was uncovered for Kiddush. What's considered wine that's uncovered? If it was left uncovered, if the bottle was left open for six hours. You're allowed to use wine that is mavushal for Kiddush, wine that, it, that was boiled, you're allowed to use for Kiddush. Before reciting Kiddush, the Kiddush cup should be washed inside the inside of the Kiddush cup and the outside of the Kiddush cup. The Kiddush cup should be filled, overflowing with wine or grape juice. You should hold the Kiddush cup in your right hand, unless you're a lefty, then your left hand. And the Kiddush cup should be raised nine inches above the table. During Kiddush, the chalas should be covered. How much does one need to drink during Kiddush? You should drink two ounces, at least two ounces. And it, it should be drink, and, it, and you should drink right after you say you finish the bracha of Kiddush. Men and women are, are obligated to make or hear Kiddush Shabbos day. Um, what's the size of that that the Kiddush cup the Kiddush cup should be? The, the Kiddush cup should be at least a revius, which is two point nine ounces. So the minimal size of a cash cup is 2.9 ounces. In order for the Kiddush to be counted as Kiddush, you have to eat a meal, you have to have a meal following the Kiddush in the same place where you made Kiddush. What is a meal? Either you eat uh, ounce of food that is that has the blessing Mizonos on it, or you eat challah. 
uh, whenever you wash, you should make sure to eat at least uh, the size of around two ounces. And if you're not able to do either of those options, you should make sure to drink, besides drinking two ounces, you should drink an additional 2.9 ounces. Now I'll be, I know that 2.9 ounces will be considered um, a meal following your Kiddush. Since wine is referred to as something that sustains a person. Both men and women are obligated to have three meals on Shabbos. And whenever you're eating challah on Shabbos, one should hold. Rabbi? Yeah. Did you say that with the meal, we should have an additional 2.9 ounces? If you are, if if you don't, you're not having a meal following Kiddush, then the wine could be your meal. So you should have additional 2.9 ounces for that wine to be considered your meal. So if you're making Kiddush and you're not having challah after Kiddush, and you're not, and, and you're also not having uh, any other food that is the blessing of Mizonos, then you have to make sure to have additional 2.9 ounces of wine or grape juice. Aye, aye. It's easier to just have a challah after Kiddush or, or some food that's Mizonos. But Rabbi, yeah. if, if you're having a meal and you have wine at the table, you can drink as much wine and eat as much food as you want, right? It's just yeah. if you're not going to have a lot, you can have this, this, or that. This is just Close the minimum that. amount in Only order for more minutes. to work. You have to have at least an ounce of... Uh, a certain types of food or at least 2.9 ounces of wine of course you could have as much as you want whatever gives you pleasure whatever that's even not only you could but it's a mitzvah too um thank you you're welcome whenever eating challah on shavis one should hold two complete challahs during the the bracha of hamaitzi when you're saying the bracha hamaitzi Okay, that's the some basic practical laws from this chapter. Next class, we're going. We're going. Next thing we're going to learn. We're going to skip. We're going to. We're not going to learn chapter seventy-eight and seventy-nine in the Kitzur Shochanara. Chapter seventy-eight discusses. The laws of read of reading the Torah on Shabbos. So, there are just which type of uh, when do what do we read every how what's the how does it work the reading of the Torah on Shabbos? Which since that there's usually you go to a show there's people that could that uh, there's usually a a, a guy by some there's. Or a rab, there's a rabbi or a gabbai that is going to take care of knowing what you're supposed to read on Shabbos and who should get called up to how it works with how many men get called up to the Torah. So but we'll, we'll skip that chapter. And chapter 79 discusses the laws of that we that we do maf, that we say mafter after the reading of the Torah. And likewise, it's usually someone in the shul that that uh, will make sure to know how how to um, what what what's the right mafta that we say, and what are the blessings you say before? What's the blessing you say before mafta? The blessing you say after mafta, and that the person that says mafta has to be called up to the Torah first. And the fall and the uh, and all, all the other and the and the other laws that uh, that are with that 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 are connected to mafter on Shabbos. Um, I just wanted to finish off with a story. We skipped the ch we skipped chapter seventy six as well, which discusses the laws of davening on Shabbos. 
In the laws of davening on Shabbos, it speaks about that uh, what if someone errors and says the weekday davening on Shabbos, and it tells us also just the different um, the different prayers that we say on Shabbos, which nowadays the we have a lot of a lot of Sadurim have instructions even in English. Many even there are even many Sadurim that have instructions in English. So it's pretty easy. So it's much easier to figure out what's the what's the davening that said it on Shabbos. But to share a story of uh, of davening. So there was a there was a Jew. In the days of the Baal Shem, the name Reb David. Reb David was a very simple Jew. He didn't know which davening do you say on Shabbos, which davening do you say during the week, what's the morning davening, the afternoon davening, the evening davening, what's the davening for a holiday, for, for Rosh Hashanah, for Yom Kippur, for Rosh Chodesh, and all the, and all the, he didn't know. So what did Rab David do? He would say then he would he would say every day the whole siddur. He would, he would open up a siddur from the beginning and say everything from the first page of the siddur to the last page of the siddur. One day the Baal Shem Tev came to his town and he told the Baal Shem Tev, would you be able to make to make in my siddur place marks and I'll know this is the starting point of what I say during the weekday, in the morning. And this is where I start saying it in the weekday, in the afternoon. And this is what I start saying in the evening. And this is the davening for Shabbos. So the Baal Shem Tov was happy to do it for him. And, and the Baal Shem Tov made place marks for Reb David. And afterwards, the Baal Shem Tov went back to his city. A little bit after the Baal Shem Tov left Reb David's house, there was a big wind, and all of Reb David's place marks fell out of his siddur. And no longer did Reb David know what's the davening oh. for the week, what's the davening for Shabbos, what's the davening for a festival. So Reb David was very upset, and he went started. He wanted to see if he could go to the Baal Shem Tev, and the Baal Shem Tev could do it again. The Baal, Shem, the Baal Shem Tev just left his town, so he started going. Leave, he also left, Reb David started traveling to try to reach the Baal Shem Tev. As the Baal Shem Tev was going on, he saw the Baal Shem Tev from far, and they came to a, a river. How, how did the Baal Shem Tev travel? He took his gartel, which is like a uh, it's uh, like a belt, a little bit different, but similar idea that he he took it off and put it in the water and he started, and the Baal Shem Tev went in the, stood in the water on this gartel and traveled through the river. And he was able to just... Uh, Walk on this walk on walk through the river. Reb David saw when Reb David got to the river. He did the same thing. He took off his gartel and put it in the river and stood on the gartel and walked through the river. After he passed through the river, he reached the Baal Shem Tev and he and he told the Baal Shem Tev, "I lost all my place marks." The Baal Shem Tev told him, "If you're able to go through a river." Walk through a river on your, with a gartel. You'll know, just walk on water. Then your your dav your 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 prayers are being answered by Hashem, and Hashem enjoys your prayers, and you don't have to switch the way you're davening. So it's important. So that's just a nice idea, important idea to keep in mind. It's the way it's the way that we we concentrate during davening, and we realize that we're davening to Hashem. That's the most important thing in davening. All right, we'll have we'll end the sh we'll end today's class with that. Want to wish everyone a good Shabbos.
And if anyone has a, has a question, then feel free to ask. Thank you, Rabbi Yossi. Good Shabbos. Thank you. Good Shabbos, everyone.